Hello, Dr. J here. I'm going to start a series of videos regarding the Fourier analysis. And the focus will hit here will be the Fourier transform. Fourier representation of signals is important in communications because it describes the frequency content of signals. For example, an orchestra in, uh, with instruments having different frequency ranges, the string bass has low frequencies while the piccolo has high frequencies. Also in a choir you have different voice parts such as the tenor, alto, and soprano parts. So, but here's an example of a noisy random signal. The signal is about one second long. which is, You can see right here is basically three cycles. So it's a three hertz signal that is riding on top of some noise. So this is all described in the time domain. What we want to do is convert this description into a frequency domain description which is described by a uh, spectrum analyzer and here's just a graphical representation using some uh, engineering software. So here we have a double-sided spectrum which because of the way Fourier transform is defined is that you have two sides the negative frequencies and positive frequencies and we'll see why later with some math but this is known as a double-sided spectrum. Spectrum also means that it's in the frequency domain so what we have here when we take the Fourier analysis of so when we take the Fourier analysis of the three hertz signal that's noisy we get a spike right here basically a double spike at plus three hertz and negative three hertz and then down here is the noisy f uh, floor signal so you can see here that the noise is, has a wide range of frequencies uh, or spectrum and here the sine wave signal is concentrated at negative 3 and 3 Hertz and I'll expand the plot the graph the spectrum uh, so you can see the resolution better here's a one single sided spectrum again here's the 3 Hertz sine wave and here's the noise floor and then going from 0 to 20 Hertz we see that the 3 hertz sine wave occurs here and that you have the noise noise floor shown here. So Fourier analysis is used to describe signals and systems using sinusoids invented by Joseph Fourier and has widespread application in many fields not only in signals and systems but at many others. So let's start off uh, what we mean by a Fourier transform is basically takes up aperiodic signals that don't repeat and continuous signals and transfers them into the Fourier domain or frequency domain. Fourier series are used to describe periodic signals and continuous signals and there's a definite relationship between these two. Um, but uh, we need a little bit more concepts before we can describe these two relationships. Uh, real quick, the Fourier series you can think of as a sampled version of the Fourier transform. Then you have discrete time Fourier transform, also for per aperiodic, but signals that are discrete, sampled of continuous signals, uh, formed, that's usually generated from continuous signals. And then finally we have the discrete time uh, Fourier series which is described for discrete time signals and that are periodic. So those are the four different uh, representations of the Fourier analysis describing different types of signals. And earlier I showed you this 3 hertz signal is periodic but it's riding on top of a continuous aperiodic noisy signal. So here's a combination of a periodic and aperiodic signal. And we could see that the Fourier analysis uh, shows you the difference between these two. Now in the frequency domain we could see that the 3 hertz sine wave has a spike right here and that's usually the distinguishing factor of um, periodic signals is they have discrete frequencies whereas the noisy signal is uh, continuous as shown or indicated by this 
drawing here. Okay. Um, again, this plot was generated by uh, MATLAB software uh, using the FFT uh, technique. Uh, but the point of this drawing is just to emphasize the difference between periodic signals defined by spikes and a continuous spectrum for uh, peri aperiodic signals, signals that don't repeat. So signals that don't repeat are continuous in the frequency domain and then signals that are periodic are discrete frequencies in the frequency domain or Fourier domain. So let's look at the definition of the Fourier transform. And mathematically it's described from uh, integral taking this time domain signal going from minus infinity to infinity multiplied by a complex exponential e to the minus j 2 pi ft integrated with respect to time to give you a frequency domain description described in f. This is uh, frequencies in hertz, but I'll also show you where other textbooks describe the Fourier dis uh, definition in terms of the radian frequency. So here again we have the time domain description signal and the frequency domain. And then going from the Fourier to the time domain description is described by the inverse Fourier transform, where we're integrating from minus infinity to infinity, taking this xf multiplied instead of minus e to the j 2 pi ft, we multiply it by e to the j 2 pi ft. This time we integrate it with respect to f, df, frequency, and then we get a time domain description. So here's our Fourier, and this is our time domain description. Now I said other textbooks uh, may describe instead of hertz by radian frequencies, and I'll probably be using this since it will save me time writing this 2 pi f. And we can see that f is also related as omega divided by 2 pi. So using the definition of the Fourier transform, we just basically substitute omega substitute omega for uh, f in here and then replace the 2 pi f with omega so here we went go from the time domain to the Fourier domain and then the inverse Fourier transformation going from the time domain to the frequency domain is governed by this definition similar to this where we have a plus j omega t instead of a negative j omega t for our Fourier this uh, transformation. So our inverse Fourier description is described by this formula. However, we scale it by 1 over 2 pi. And that's the difference between the one described in the radian frequency and the frequency is this 2 pi factor. Okay, the next video we'll find um, the Fourier transform of a unit pulse with a width of t using our Fourier transformation. However, I'm running out of time. So signing off is Dr. J. See you next time.